You know, it says in uh, Galatians 3, 5, Galatians 3, 5 says, therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And that's what, I, that's what I am believing for. I've been praying for this conference for some time. I've been meditating on this. And I really believe that just the hearing of faith is going to heal many of you. If all of us can be healed. Anyone can be healed. But it, it takes hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And he works miracles among us by the hearing of faith. So again, I would encourage you. I would exhort you. Uh, I may say some things you, that you've heard before. Big deal. Listen new. Make, let it be new for you. Act as if you've never heard this before. And I know the word is going to work. I trust the word of God. How many of you trust the word of God? His word is like silver purified seven times. Amen. And so that word can go to work. It's going to go to work. It should be working right now in your hearts. Amen. So I want to start in uh, Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. I want to read with you verses 11 and 12. And it says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? That's the title of this message. What do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Or King James says, I am, want you know, how to, I don't know what King James says. Anyway, <laughs> I used to know. Uh, I think the word hasten might be in there. Or maybe not, but the interesting thing is, he, he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see the branch of an almond tree. What he's talking about here, if you look this up, and it's more political, poetical in the sense that the almond tree at this time in Israel was the first thing to, to bud in the spring. It wasn't even spring. Everything else would still be dormant, but that would be the first thing that would start to, to spring forth into life. And what God is saying to Jeremiah, you've seen well, what literally you could say is, I see that which is awakening. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see that which is awakening. And he says, you have seen well, for I am awakening my word to perform it. I am hastening my word. I am watching over my word to perform it. I like this because what it, the, the question, what do you see, determined what God then said. I am watching over my word to perform it. I am hastening my word. It, it is the thing that is springing, springing forth now. It says it is a new awakening. I want to talk to you about new awakenings. Because all of us in this room, and I would include myself in this, we all need daily new awakenings. New awakenings to the word of God. New awakenings to the purpose of God. New awakenings to the, to the will of God for your life. We need to believe that there is something new. His mercies are new every morning, are they not? Yes. Amen. And so we should be expecting new things. I don't care if you've been in a, a physically debilitated state for 20 years, today is a new day. Don't bring those past 20 years with you and say, well, God hasn't done anything for me yet. What do you see? What do you see? And it's time, and this is, this is a powerful message for me, I'll share some of my testimony here in a minute, but it's time for us to recognize that only what we see in our spiritual man, in our spiritual heart, only what we see are we going to get. Now, I'm going to challenge you in some of that as, as we go through this. But we've got to be able to see things. When I, I talk to so many people, so many people come to me, so many people write me, and, and you know, I have this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. What, what do you see? And I get this blank stare. What have you heard from God? Another blank stare. But I'm quoting these scriptures. I'm standing on these scriptures. What have you seen? What have you heard? Well, I've got my scriptures. A parrot can quote scriptures. <laughs> By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. By... <laughs> Has the parrot seen this? Has the parrot been touched by God? Has the parrot heard this? No, just quoting scripture. What have you seen? This, this is life changing. That was for me, literally life saving for me. A number of years ago, back in 2020, I was diagnosed, I mean, diagnosed and then within five minutes told I was dying and was, was going to die uh, with cancer. 
I'm lying in a hospital bed. I've been rushed there because of blood tests and what have you and just general panic in the medical people. And so I'm in this hospital and I'm told, Mr. Bennett, I don't know if you are a man that makes plans, but you need to make some. You need to get your affairs in order. And then they went about trying to save my life in the very immediate sense so that I didn't, didn't die in two days. But uh, they, they gave me very little time anyway after that because of the number of things that were wrong with me. And as I was lying in that hospital bed and I heard those words, immediately on the heels of that came the word of the Lord to me. It was a very still small voice. Conception is quiet. Sometimes you hear and you don't realize you've heard. But you've got to meditate in what you think you may have heard. You may have heard God. I did. You will not die from this, you will live. At that moment, I was healed. Listen carefully. My body wasn't back yet. I went through a year of struggling with this. But the healing took place when the word was birthed in my heart. And what happened from there is I began to see my healing. And I remember I was in the hospital three or four days and then I got to, went home and, and then start this chemo process and all this kind of stuff. And I was sitting on the couch in the living room and uh, watching a video from Karis and it was, I was watching, uh, where's Audrey? I was watching Audrey Mack right here on this platform. And as I'm watching that and feeling really disoriented with what in the world has happened to me, like I'd been hit by a train that I didn't know I was even on the tracks, that kind of thing. And I'm I'm disoriented, but I have a word from God, but I'm watching Audrey. And Audrey is powerful. If you haven't heard Audrey, you will this week, I guess, but awesome. And she's up here right, right where I'm standing and ministering powerfully. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Barry, that is your platform. That is your pulpit. Those are your people, and you will preach there again. That's, that was the beginning of my seeing, my healing. I had heard the word, but now it was beginning to take shape. And I began to project myself into, forgive me, into Audrey. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Deal with it. But I, but I saw myself, this is, I'm supposed to be up here. Amen. It's not yeah. that she's not, it's just that me too. Right. I'm going to be up here. I will be back. And then they started doing live Bible studies because of COVID. And so we started this uh, daily live Bible study thing. And I was watching that and I'm thinking, that's me. That's mine. I'm supposed to be doing that. I began to see that. And then I began to see Christmas because we lost a whole Christmas with COVID and everything. And so I thought, I'm gonna, we're going to do a blowout Christmas this year. So I began to plan that. I began to see the future. I began to see taking my wife on vacation. We just finished our fourth one since then. Yes. Amen. Why? Because I began to see it. I began to see what God had for our lives. What do you see, Barry? I see vacation. I see preaching and teaching. I see being back in school. I see live Bible studies. This was a key for me. This was, I could even say the key. I don't know if it's the key. I always say that about everything. But it was certainly a key for me to see a new awakening. To see the return of life into my body before I could tell you that it was happening physically. I knew it spiritually. And I chose to not look at what was, I went ahead and lost 30 pounds, if you can imagine. I lost all my hair. Don't imagine. Uh, (laughs) I went, through, I went through all kinds of, of stuff for a year, but that never shook the spiritual dynamic of hearing God speak to me and then seeing my future, even though my present was a mess. It says in Matthew 12, 35, Matthew 12, 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. When you see the words brings forth, we're talking about the future. But where is it coming from? It says a good man, we'll stick with the good man right now. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth his future. Brings forth good things. Is seeing something from his heart 
and is, is coming forth from his mouth, is coming forth from his actions, but it's in the heart. How did it get there? How did it get there? That's a very legitimate question. How does a treasure, good or evil, get into the heart of someone? It's what they spend their time consuming. It's what they value. It's what they watch and listen to. It is creating a treasure, good or evil, within. And that is what they are seeing, and that is what they are saying. And that's the future they're bringing forth. Now, this works in every aspect of life, but we're talking about healing. What do you see right now about yourself? Every one of us has a picture or multiple pictures within. We have pictures of our marriage and what we see about our marriage for the future or whether we've already given up. We have pictures of our kids, what we see. If you have two-year-olds, you're either saying a, you're seeing a terrible two or you're seeing a future man or woman of God. What are you seeing? Amen. You get to pick what you see. Your something is getting in you to create an image, create a vision, create hopelessness or create faith. Something is getting in you. It's called a treasure. How is it getting there? And then you're going to start seeing it. Every one of us in this room has images. We have pictures. It's funny, we were driving to, I was taking my wife out to eat the other day, and I had chosen a, a burger place. I just felt like a burger and a shake. And so we get to the corner where it's a left or a right, and, and right as we're pulling up to the corner, she says, I'm feeling like a steak. And I instantly saw it. <laughs> and I'm just about to turn left, and I just mm, I turn right, because her words created a new vision in me. I saw a burger, she saw a steak. Now, I wouldn't have turned right, I would have turned left, except words birthed a new vision. What do you see? What are you hearing? What are you listening to? You will eventually believe what you hear enough times. If you're watching the news, I can prophesy over your life. If you're feeding on news 24-7, if you can't wait to find out the latest little detail of every little scandal and stuff going on, if that's, where you're, that, that's your value and you're feeding on that, I can tell you all about your treasure and I can tell you about your future. You're going to be miserable. Miserable. Because that's the treasure that you've allowed in, into your heart. Everyone in here has a, an image, a picture of your future. You may not consciously be, even be aware of it, but you can't get home without a vision of where you live. You can't, if you're in a hotel, you can't get there if you don't have a memory vision of where it is. You can't find your car. I'm, I'm stealing some of this from Andrew's book, <laughs> uh, The Power of the Imagination, but you can't find your car in the parking lot if you don't have a memory vision of it but not only do we have memory visions, we have projected visions of what we think life could be like, should be like, might be like, who knows what it's gonna be like. You either have a confidence in your future or you have a, a messy, mus uh, fuzzy picture of I don't know what's gonna happen. Why don't you? And if we're talking about healing, well, I don't know what's gonna happen. Why don't you? I was told I was gonna die. I had two days to live. Within five seconds, I had a new vision. I had a hamburger vision, all of a sudden I had a steak vision. <laughs> because I heard a different word. I heard God. And that birthday new vision, and then I began the process of seeing my future. I am standing right now in something I saw Amen. four years ago. Amen. Amen. You're either seeing healing and health and those, a lot of you are here for healing. You're either seeing healing and health or you're seeing sickness and suffering and potentially death. You may say, well, I'm not seeing that. Well, what, what are you seeing? Tell me about it. What are you seeing? Well, I'm not really sure. Well, you're not seeing health or you would have said so. You're not seeing healing or you would have said so. When you see it, you know it. When it's in your heart, persuaded or uh, quickened by the Holy Spirit, you become fully persuaded, and you see it. And I could see good things in my future. And I've said this before, and some of you have heard this. I would go on Amazon from my bedroom or from the hospital, and I would buy things 
I couldn't use until I was healed. I was preparing for the future because I could see myself well. Now, you may have been in, in your whatever physical affliction you might have. You may have been in that situation five years, 10 years, 20 years. I don't know. What are you seeing? Well, I sure hope I get healed this week. No, you're, hitting, you're not seeing anything yet. Well, I sure hope Andrew lays hands on me and it'd be so cool to get well. You're not seeing anything yet. You need to decide if you're going to use what God has given you, spiritual eyes, to see the fruit of the abundant life. What are you looking at? I couldn't look at symptoms. They were depressing. So I looked at my future. I had symptoms. Let me, let me share something with you about healing. Healing takes place when you believe you receive. Forget symptoms. They may go away instantly, or they may linger. Mine were for a year. But I was healed on day one. And so many people don't believe they're healed till they feel healed or see their symptoms gone. They won't believe it. Therefore, they never receive it, or seldom. But you've got to see yourself. I see my youth renewed like the eagles. I I had a... my yearly report. They're following my case because I'm so special. And uh, <laughs> I, I had my yearly report in June. So cancer free, the doctor says, I don't even know if I need to see you anymore, but just for protocol, I want to follow this two more years. But there's nothing, nothing. I don't take any drugs, no prescriptions. And a giant part of it was because that's what I chose to see. And I still do. And I still am projecting my future. And I tell the students, the most important part of my day is seeing my future. I spend time. If I'm not driving, I will close my eyes. (laughs) Tried it the other way, it doesn't work. And I will take time to see blessing my wife, see blessing my kids, see blessing my grandkids, see preaching and teaching here, ministering, blessing people here. I take time to see it because the more it's alive within my heart, the more it's, that's the treasure that I'm going to be bringing forth. What's in your heart? What's your treasure? That's why I wrote the book, You Have the Advantage. So many Christians are writing me complaining and complaining and complaining and telling me everything that's wrong and the reason why they can't do it. And and then they get offended at God. Why doesn't God do anything? And I'm thinking, do you not know who you are? Do you not know who Christ is in you? Do you not know the name of Jesus, the power of that name, the power of the spirit, the power of the covenant, the power of the promises, the power of your words, the armor of God, the gifts of the spirit? You're telling me you're a victim? Come on, wake up. You will see, you will see victim, or you will be a victim as long as you see victim. And as long as you talk victim, you'll be a victim. But if you can see what God sees, he sees everyone in this room healed. He's already done his part. He's done his thing. It's done. It's up to us to plug in. Some people don't even know they have a cord. (laughs) Much less, where's the outlet? No, we, we aren't the victims. We have the advantage. We have the power. We have the name. We have God living in us. But what do you see? What do you see? Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Or we could say, as a man or woman think in their heart, so are they. What are you seeing in your heart? What's going on in there? What's the transactions that are going on? What, is it fear? Is it bitterness? Is it woe is me? And then we come up to the front to be prayed for and you haven't seen a darn thing. Or you have on the other side, just all the woe is me stuff. You've got to start to see what God has for you before your body gets in line with it. Your body could, I've been healed instantly. I've been healed in two days. And I've been now the testimony of one year. I prefer the instantly. Everybody does. But I had to see something first. My, I was told my son was dead in the womb. I didn't see that. 
I was shown a sonogram and all the tests, the sacus collapsed, there was no heartbeat dead. What came out of me was no. No, I don't see that. I see my son. Well, he's now 45, doing pretty well. All right. I was told I, I had cancer in my ear, skin cancer in my ear, and I was told they have to do an operation. The operation is going to be so significant, they're going to have to then do plastic surgery on my ear. This is about seven years ago. I said, no. It wasn't Barry being stubborn. It was the Spirit of God Amen. coming through me. No, that's not what I see. I didn't go back. They sent me a letter, a registered letter in the mail. You must do this. You must do that. I tore it up. No. Took a year. You can come up and look in my ear. It's cool. <laughs> uh, nothing. Completely healed. Never came back because I could see it healed. I was on a pre-op table for a giant kidney stone. They said, this will not pass. As Andrew says, it came to pass. Uh -huh. <laughs> And they told me that they, a doctor was coming from another hospital in the city to come to this hospital to do a procedure on me. And the Spirit of God said, no. And I said, unhook me, unplug me, I'm going home. Betty Kay, my, I didn't, forgot to introduce my wife. It's my wife, Betty Kay. <laughs> they said, this will not pass, it's too big, it's bigger than it's possible. Watch me. I don't see that. I don't see what you want to do. I, don't, I can't see it. I got up. I left. We went home. Two days later, it passed. No pain. Because that's what I saw. You've got to have a vision to do anything, folks. I have a long fence in my front yard. It's a weird-shaped piece of property, and the fence goes on forever. And right now, it needs some spot painting. But I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Now you're laughing, but this is the truth. <laughs> I've got to see something before I do it. There's no faith for it. There's no vision for it. I've got to see it. Do I see myself painting the fence today? No, I don't see it today. <laughs> but I've painted that fence many times, and every time I did it, it's because I could see it. Now, we're joking around, you might think, but this is real. You don't eat dinner without seeing yourself eating dinner. You don't do anything without first seeing it. It may be subconscious, it may be a nanosecond of time, but you gotta see it before you do it. It doesn't happen without seeing it. Praise God. Let's go to Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five, verses 25 through 29. Everybody knows this story, I've preached this. I'm gonna have to meet this lady in heaven because I have used her story thousands of times, and so have many, many others. And even today, I think it was Daniel that talked about the woman with the issue of blood. Mark 5.25 says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things for many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard, okay, listen to me. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, Okay, so there's a hearing and there's an action, but preceding the action, I'm going to give you something more here. For she said, verse 28, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. If you go to the account in Luke, if I touch the hem of his garment or the border of his garment. And I got to meditate on that one day and the Lord was speaking to me and said, why did she say that? Why did she say if I touch his hair, if I touch his shoulder, if I touch his elbow? If I touch the hem of his garment, why did she say that? Because that's what she saw. She heard about how good Jesus is. And she, that hearing produced a vision. If I can just, and I'm not talking about a, a technicolor vision in heaven. I'm talking about an, a, a, an image in the heart. If I can but touch the hem of his garment and see her seeing produced her speaking. You're only going to talk about what you see. That's why complainers are telling you what's in their heart. That's what they see. Victims are telling you what's in their heart. That's what they see. They're talking out of what they see. She saw herself getting healed. 
And she said, if I can just get to the hem of his garment, I will be made well. I will be made whole. Her hearing produced seeing. Take notes. This is, this is life. Hearing produces seeing no matter what hearing you're hearing. If you're hearing the news, it's going to produce a vision, probably of a woe is us. And you're then going to talk to other people about how bad things are. And then you're going to act accordingly. You're going to hear it. You're going to see it. You're going to say it. You're going to do it. Four things. This is gold, folks. All of us are doing this, whether you know it or not. She heard, which created a vision. It was her vision. No one gave her a specific vision. Go touch the hem of his garment. That was her. That was where her faith was. And then she spoke what she saw as she went to do what she heard, saw, and spoke. The, this, this will change you if you'll, if you'll do this. Now, I want to I wanna rattle some cages here. She did not quote a single scripture. She did not quote scripture. We have become very proficient in rattling off our promises and we haven't seen a thing. And we'll ask each other, what are you standing on? Not what have you seen, what are you standing on? Not what have you heard, what are you standing on? A parrot can quote scriptures. And we have lost the first two steps and we're sticking with the quoting scripture step, saying something, I'm not putting this down, I want you to see though when it is applicable. And it's not applicable before you see or hear, but only after. And in her case, she did not speak scripture, she spoke what she saw. She spoke what she saw. What are you seeing? What's the picture on the inside of you for your family? I don't know, I don't really ever think about it. Well, that's your treasure, that's your future. What's your picture for your finances? Well, I just hope I keep my job. That's your treasure, that's your future. That's your vision, that's what you're seeing. I just hope we get by. That's your vision, that's what you're gonna get. Maybe, maybe you'll get by, maybe you won't. What are you seeing for your health? What are you seeing right now for this week and what's happening right here? What did you come expecting? What did you come seeing? Th this, is, this is gonna make or break what happens here this week. What are you hearing? Are you hearing me? Not me so much. Are you hearing God through me? Because God is speaking through me right now. Are you hearing it? Because, oh, I don't know. Well, then you're not, because if you are, a vision is being birthed in your heart. And once that vision gets birthed, once there's, once there's a conception, there's going to be a vision. Ladies, when there's a conception, you that are mothers, doesn't your vision for life change? When you know something has been, a child has been conceived inside of you, don't you start to get vision? A nursery? New furniture, baby clothes, diapers, baby food, baby clothes, more furniture, <laughs> more clothes. What's going on? Something has been conceived in you, in this case, literally, physically, and it's producing a vision, which then, it's all you talk about. It's like every, every it cracks me up, don't get offended. But pregnant women all feel like it's the first time this has ever happened, you know. <laughs> and there's this glow on their face. It's like no one's ever had a baby before. Look at me. All right. Well, what changed that vision? What, what has consumed her A conception? Well, what should be consuming you? Something needs to be conceived. You need to hear God. It's going to give you a vision for a nursery and baby clothes. Yeah. It's going to give you a vision for your future. It's going to give you a vision for preaching and teaching and doing live Bible studies and going on vacation, something's got to be conceived to create a vision from which you will then speak your vision. She was speaking a vision, the woman with the issue of blood. She wasn't just making stuff up as she went. 
She saw something, and you say, well, where'd that come from? It came from her. It came from her. What, it says in uh, uh, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, not his heart, your heart. Did you know you have the creator of the universe living inside of you? You think it's wrong for you to have ideas? No, it's not wrong for you to have ideas. You're created to have ideas. You're created to be a creator. If she wants to say him of his garment, him of his garment it is. If she wants to say touch his hair, hair it is. If she wants to touch his elbow, elbow it is. It's her desire. And she gets to speak it forth once she sees it. This is, oh, this is so key. And she didn't quote a single scripture. She quoted what she saw. And I see this now. I've seen it in my life. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I've done this. What's my scripture I'm standing on? No, back up the truck. What have you heard? What have you seen? Then if you have a scripture for that, amen. Or meditate in the scripture until you see it. Meditate in that verse, that promise until, I, I do this. I take promises of God and I spend time seeing them. I'll make movies in my head of different things going on in the Bible or of promises and try to see what does that look like? His paths drip with abundance. What does that look like? So I did a whole study on paths, the paths of God, paths of the righteous, the paths of the unjust, paths to the wicked woman's house, all these paths, everything was paths. We have streets, they had paths. The paths of God drip with abundance. Okay, I take time to see that. What does that, what does dripping look like? What, what, abundance, dripping abundance, what does that look like? I don't know that I still have seen it clearly. But this is what I'm talking about. Take time in your day to see your future. Because out of the abundance of the heart, you're speaking what you see. Matthew 12, 34, you're going to speak. Matthew 12, 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth. What's he, what are you bringing forth? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you then. I can, I'm, I can be very prophetic when I hear that kind of stuff. If you don't know, then I can tell you your future. It's a mess. Because you haven't seen what God has seen. You haven't seen what could be conceived in you. You're too busy complaining and wondering why. Why doesn't God do anything? God's done everything he's going to do. If anybody is here waiting on God, you're in the wrong meeting. God is done. God's waiting on you. And his word is alive and active. And it's ready to conceive itself in you. So that you can see it, say it, and receive it. This is how I got healed. I got healed on day one. My body didn't catch up for 12 months. But I got it caught up. Amen. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Amen. I want to give you another promise here. John 14, 14. John 14, 14. It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Is that in everybody's Bible? Everybody got that in their Bible? <laughs> if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Don't go to a theologian about this verse. They will steal it from you. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He goes on in, in John 16, I forget which verse it is. Ask it what you desire that your joy may be made full. Your joy. If you ask anything in my name. And so here's what theologians will do. Well, now that means according to his very specific will, maybe, if do you, at first, do you really need it? Or is this just a carnal want? I don't see all those words in there like that. It just says, if you ask anything. Anything means anything. Well, but come on, now you gotta qualify it. It can't be some silly thing. It's gotta be this, and it's gotta be this way, and what if it, you might be in the flesh? So, basically forget it. No, what you've just done is you, you're now asking in your name if you're worthy enough, if you really need it, if it's not something frivolous. You're, you've changed from his name to your name without even realizing it because that's what you see. You see your unworthiness. You see that you don't deserve this. 
You, you've sinned, you yelled at the parakeet yesterday, so you got to repent from that. And you, you have all this stuff going on inside of you, and you have switched from his name to your name, and that's why you're not receiving, because you're seeing you, you're not seeing him. Is this, is anybody here? When we ask, we need to be seeing him, not us. We need to see his goodness. We need to see his extravagance. I have a message called the extravagance of God. It's a good word. We need to see his extravagance, his incredible goodness, his provision for every need, pressed down, shaken together, running over, exceedingly abundantly, more than we can ask or think. Well, that's what we need to be seeing. Instead of, I don't know if I really deserve this. This is probably just my flesh. That's not what it says. If you ask anything in his name, not your name, in his name, are you seeing that? Are you worthy enough to be healed? There's probably some people in here checking their hearts. If you're checking your heart, you've got problems already because you don't believe you're righteous. Yes, you're worthy enough to be healed. You're a human being alive on this planet and all the sins of the earth were paid for. I think it was Andrew this morning, 1 John 2, 2, or Daniel, I forget which one. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Well, if the whole world has had their sins dealt with, anybody can get healed, but they don't do it because they don't see it. We've turned the good news into bad news. Well, in this case, if it be his will, you know, God is sovereign. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And we have confused all these issues. And so people are having a hard time seeing God's will in their heart. That's why they're not receiving God's will in their life. It has nothing to do with God. It's all about what do you see? What do you see? Amen. Praise God. Your attitude is going to be a reflection of what you see. And your attitude is either going to lead you toward a life of, of victory or a life of misery. That's why you, you listen to people talk, listen to you talk. Back when we had uh, little tape recorders on our hips or Walkmans or something, I always would tell people that I was ministering to get one of those, hook up a microphone like this, and then at the end of the day, go listen to everything you said. That's why your life's in a mess. Because you're going to speak about what you see in your heart. It, you can't help it. You're going to speak out of the abundance of the, your heart. Your mouth is going to speak. What do you see? And so I'm lying in a hospital, seeing myself preaching. Lying at home, seeing myself doing live Bible studies. Sitting in a chair in my bedroom, seeing myself wearing these shoes. Later when I saw them, I thought, eh. <laughs> but they were part of my future at the time. Bought some shirts I've never worn. I've given a bunch of stuff away. Probably drugs were involved. <laughs> but but I, was see, I was seeing my future. I was seeing my future. Folks, I'm telling you, that's why I'm standing here today. I was so close to death. I, I had a giant tumor on my pancreas. My pancreas had stopped. My liver had stopped. I was being poisoned to death with, with bile. I had the, hem, the tumor had hemorrhaged. I was bleeding internally. This is all happening on the same day. I'm turning yellow, and then they discover cancer in my blood. That wasn't a good day. So when people tell me, well, the doctor says I have six months. I'm thinking, six months? Piece of cake. <laughs> it takes one second to get a word from God. What have you seen? Well, I just hope somebody comes to my funeral. You're going to die. Because <laughs> that's what you've seen. No, no, no. You're going to see me right here. This, this is, this translates over into, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get conflictive a little bit here, but it's okay. You have to love me. It's biblical. Amen. All right. Barry, I can't believe you went to the doctor. And Barry, I can't believe you took chemo. And you're saying you were healed. Yeah, I was healed, and I had faith and peace 
to go through the process. Barry, what about all those side effects? Well, you're looking at the side effect. Okay. Barry, you know, I started to grow a tail, but we took care of that. But, no, there's no side effects. The joy of the Lord is my big side effect. Living is my side effect. But here's the, here's the thing. I didn't see the doctor as my enemy. I didn't see going to the doctor as a guilt trip, as so many Christians do. And they hide, they try to hide it from their pastor and hide it. If you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor, but do it in faith. If you can't go in faith, don't go. So many people confuse this. They say, well, if I go to the doctor, my pastor is going to be upset with me and my friends are going to be upset. And they're going to say, why don't you have faith? Uh, but take it from me. It takes faith to go to the doctor. <laughs> Amen. I had to sign all kinds of stuff about all the horrible things that might happen. I never read any. I haven't read to this day one word of it because I had faith to do that that time. But the other time I got up off the table and left. Or the other time I tore up the registered letter with the ear thing. You got to hear from God. And so many Christians die prematurely because they are, af they are afraid to go to the doctor and they're calling that faith. No, that's fear. I just don't have faith to go to the doctor. No, you're afraid. If you're afraid, be afraid. I, but call it what it is. Or you can get set free from all that religious bondage. You know what? I went to the doctor many times, many, many times. My wife took me every time. I mean, we, I've, I've met them all. <laughs> I've been through every test you can think of. Never once had an ounce of fear and never once had an ounce of guilt. I had a word from God. I had faith. I could see myself well. This is what we're going to do. Okay, let's do it. I had the best doctors. I had the best nurses. I never had a bad problem. I, why? Because I went into it with faith. Yes. If you go into it with fear, good luck. If you think doctors are out to get you, good luck. You, what, are, what are you seeing? I'm not telling people to go to the doctor. I'm telling you to hear God and get a vision for one thing or the other, but don't move without your vision, without your picture. You've got to see something. What you see is your future. Is this, is this message doing anything? In Mark, I want to start winding up here because I want to pray with you all. In Mark 9, 23... Jesus said to the man who brought his son to the disciples and they couldn't, couldn't handle it. He said to the father, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step on your toes again for a second, but it's okay. It says me, okay. It doesn't say if you can quote enough scriptures. It doesn't say that. It says if you can believe. What did Job believe? That which I greatly feared has come upon me. That was his place. What did the woman with the issue of blood believe? If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. What did the people around Peter believe? If we can just get his shadow to touch us, we'll get healed. Where's the scripture? No scripture for that, but that's what they believed. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Why did they take claws from Paul's body and take them to sick people and they would get healed? Where's the scripture for that? They weren't quoting scripture. They were seeing something in the spirit. And I'm not putting down quoting scripture. I'm saying we're getting the cart before the horse. What are you seeing? The guys that brought their friend to Jesus and it says in the power, the Pharisees were in the house with Jesus. It's his house in Capernaum. It's Jesus rented or owned, I don't know. It's where Jesus has headquarters. And there's a crowd, and it says the power of God was present to heal. And usually we try to translate that into, well, he was just putting out vibes, man. There's just healing power. Just <laughs> No, he was teaching the word. That was the power that was present to heal. But they weren't listening. They were, they were criticizing. But the guys that got up on the roof and dug a hole and let their friend down, he got healed. The power was present, but the power is in the word. But they could see a different outcome. 
The Pharisees are wasting our time. Let's get up there and they're not receiving because they don't see Jesus as anything special. But th- these other guys did. Jairus says, if you just come lay your hands on her, she will live on his daughter. That's what he saw. The centurion saw something else. Just speak the word. Everybody is getting what they see. You will too. What do you see? What do you see tonight? What do you see this week in this conference? What, what's been birthed in your heart? Well, I sure hope so. No, stop hoping. Start seeing. What are you seeing? Everybody that got healed in Jesus' day, they weren't quoting scriptures. And again, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Please don't misquote me. But I'm just telling you, don't quote your scripture till you've seen your scripture. Meditate on it. Let it go to work in your life. Let it come to life. See it, then quote it. Now you've got power. When you're declaring what you see, the power is released. If you're just declaring without seeing, you're going to get frustrated. Anybody here ever been frustrated? I'll raise both hands. Well, I've prayed and prayed and prayed and quoted and quoted and quoted and all of these scriptures and nothing happened. I've been there. But finally, I'm starting to learn some things. And that's why I'm standing here sharing this with you. What have you seen? And if you can see yourself well, if you can see whatever, the, whatever ails you, gone. How many people in here are dealing with cancer? If you don't mind raising your hand, I just want to... Got cancer diagnoses? I hate cancer. Do you hate cancer? Cancer is of the devil. Can you see yourself cancer-free? If you can't, you need to go home and meditate on it until you can. Can you see yourself pain-free or dialysis-free or heart murmur-free or palpitation-free? Can you see yourself free? Do you see it? Do you see healed? Do you see health? Do you see your life completely restored, renewed, rejuvenated? Do you see it? Yes. Amen. Got one person, praise God. (laughs) This is the key to getting healed. What you see comes from what you hear, not the news, not Hollywood. What are you hearing from God? Thank God I could hear him say, you will not die. Thank God I could hear that. What if I hadn't heard that? I would not be standing here. But that little, small, still small voice created an image that a few days later got Audrey Mack into it. Amen. (laughs) Love Audrey. And a few, and then the the, the visions kept building. They kept building. I kept seeing more and more because I heard a word. I didn't even hear a scripture. I heard a word. Now I can find a lot of scriptures and I believe them all. And I can rattle them off for you, but it's only the ones I truly see that have power when I speak. I see myself, I mean, I wasn't supposed to, I was 67 when this started. I wasn't supposed to make it to 68. Next week I'll be 72. And I'm just getting started. And by the grace of God, Andrew has allowed me to have a daily TV show now that, on the new network. It's going to be awesome. I don't want to die. I'm not, I'm not done. But I've got to see myself living. Do you see yourself living? Whatever you believe, you can have. And you're going to believe what you've heard because it's created an image and that you got to maintain that image, that vision, that picture on the inside of you. That you are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The devil doesn't have any right to your body in the name of Jesus. You have, you have the advantage. You have the authority. You have the power. You have the name. You have the spirit. You have the promises. We are overloaded with good stuff. But do you see it? Do you see it? I want to pray with you. I want you, if you would, to stand. How many, this, this has gone off in your heart, and you're, if you're not seeing the full picture yet, you're determined that you will see it. Raise your hand. You're going to see something new. You're going to see what God has for your life. You're going to see his good purposes. You're going to see his prosperity. You're going to choose to see his abundance. You're going to choose to see your body completely well and healed. You're going to choose to see that. 
That's the people I want standing up. We, we've got to decide enough of letting the world set the, the course of our life. Enough of that. Enough of watching all this garbage and then trying to bring forth healing out of your heart. It's not in there. Fox is in there. Or whatever you watch. You've got to get the right stuff in your heart to bring forth the right future. You've got to see what God sees. Amen. Let's, let's go before the Lord. Father, we love you. Praise God. Praise God for this opportunity to shake our tree, to stir us up, to, to, to hear something that is going to create a new path for the future. Your paths drip with abundance. I want that path. And I see, and on behalf of everyone here in this room and those watching in the future, I see visions being conceived just like women conceive babies but there's got to be intimacy with the Father. There's got to be a seeing. There's got to be a hearing. Something's going to have to happen. And we're going to have a new image, a new vision. And that vision is going to change our lives. I am healed. I was healed on day one. And my body caught up. It may catch up tonight. It may catch up tomorrow. It may catch up in, a, in six months or a year. Who knows? but you know you're getting healed right now because God is speaking right now. Father, I speak the power of healing in this room right now because the word is here, the power is here. The word is here, the power is here. And everyone that has a receptive heart, an open mind and an open heart, receive the word implanted and let it create a vision. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? See yourself running, jumping, dancing, whatever it is that you feel like you can't do anymore. See it. Let it grow inside. Turn off everything else. Please turn off everything else because that's going to contaminate your vision. Stop listening to the doubters and complainers. That's going to contaminate your vision. Stop listening to the funeral plans. Stop listening until you have six months. No, I don't have, I have six and then I have six more and then I have six more years and then I have 60 more years. You set the course. It's the desire of your heart. What do you see? What are the desires in your heart? The desire giver lives in you. Father, you live in us. And we receive, Father, the power of vision, spiritual eyes to see. We're not going to look at things which are seen, but things which are not seen. The spiritual dynamic, the spiritual reality, the promise of God fulfilled in our lives. Abundant life. I choose to see it. Everyone in this room, we are choosing to see healing, health, long life. We speak that power in this room. We speak vision into this room. I speak vision into every heart. I pray hearts be shaken that need to be shaken. Others be uh, willingly accepting the good soil and the seed into this good soil. In the name of Jesus, healing is taking place right now. And your body will catch up whenever it catches up, but you've got to believe you're receiving it right now. Right now. Is that your vision? If not, get it. Get a vision. And believe God. All things are possible to him who believes. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.